Hi, everybody, and welcome to English 101 with David Hancock. I am David Hancock, and in this episode of Sentence, we're going to talk about the difference between dependent and independent clauses. And basically, this video is also going to be about the difference between how we use a comma, one of the ways we use a comma, and how we use a semicolon, one of the ways that we use a semicolon. And as we get more into the individual usage of punctuation throughout the, the course of this channel's um, growth, then we'll see how these are used in more detail. But for today, we're going to talk about the difference between these two different types of clauses, well, what a clause is, and how they can be used in sentences and how they're used properly with English grammar. So the first thing to ask, ask is, what is a clause? All right, so what is a clause? A clause lives at the North Pole, makes toys for good children, does not kick or kidnap bad children, wears an obnoxious red suit, enjoys kids sitting on his lap a bit too much, has reindeer and not friends who used to be slaves, and drinks Coca-Cola. All of these things with the dots are, of course, for U.S. mythology. And I have just completely talked about Santa Claus and not sentence clauses. That was my mistake. A clause is a part of a sentence. That's it. It's a functional part of a sentence. A clause is a functional part of a sentence, and this is vitally important to understanding what a clause is. Because there's another thing that looks like a clause, and that's called a phrase. I can't believe I put this in the wrong spot. So a clause is a functional part of a sentence, and a phrase is a non-functional part of a sentence, and that's how we differentiate them. So let's take a look at what that means in the context of an actual sentence. My friend Bob lives in an apartment, doesn't clean it, and plays video games all day. That's a complete sentence. It describes Bob and gives you a pretty good understanding of who Bob is and a pretty good guess at how he smells. So let's take a look at part of this that is a clause and what part of this is a phrase. So what we'll do is phrases and clauses. So a phrase is basically just a grouping of words that has a meaning, right? Plays video games all day is a phrase. Lives in an apartment is a phrase. Those are, those are two good examples of phrases. We could probably pick some more out of this sentence. But let's take a look at a, at a clause. My friend Bob lives in an apartment. That's a clause. And the difference between a clause and a phrase, doesn't clean it, is a clause, and plays video games all day, is a clause, because it has the and in there, is a clause is a part of a sentence which conveys a, a thought. And a phrase is just a groupings of words that conveys a thought. But a phrase in and of itself cannot stand alone as a part of a sentence. Okay? So, a phrase plays video games all day and plays video games all day. Okay, now we have a clause. My friend Bob lives in an apartment. That's a clause because it, can, it conveys a thought into itself. Lives in an apartment is just a phrase. It, it paints a picture, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything other than painting a picture. So now let's take a look at, we're going to keep the sentence up here. I'm going to erase the red lines because we're done talking about phrases. And now that we have a common understanding about what constitutes a clause, let's ask instead what constitutes a dependent or an independent clause. What is a dependent clause? What is an independent clause? I'm gonna underline these here so you can follow along and see what we're talking about. We're gonna go back to the same sentence. My friend Bob lives in an apartment, doesn't clean it, and plays video games all day long. Bob basically has a pretty great life. So, what is an independent clause? It could be a sentence on its own, meaning that if you had an independent clause and a whole bunch of other stuff in a sentence and you deleted the whole bunch of other stuff and just had the independent clause, it could be a sentence on its own. So is there a part of this sentence that jumps out at you as something that could be an independent sentence on its own? 
my friend Bob lives in an apartment is a complete sentence if we put a period at the end of it. It's just a statement about the speaker's friend Bob. Doesn't clean it and plays video games all day. Well, let's take out everything in blue. Doesn't clean it and plays video games all day. Is that a complete sentence by itself? The answer is no, it's not. It doesn't have a subject. Kind of has a verb, not really, because these are things that are providing more information. So doesn't clean it and plays video games all day isn't something that can stand on its own as a sentence in the way that my friend Bob, who, my, my, my friend Bob lives in an apartment, can stand on its own as a separate sentence. So, underlined in blue is an independent clause. Doesn't clean it, dependent clause, plays video games all day, dependent clause, because the dependent clause depends on an independent clause to be able to function as part of a sentence. A dependent clause requires that a dependent clause also be in the sentence in order for the dependent clause to function as part of a sentence or to be a viable part of speech. So I promised that we would talk about commas and semicolons and how those play a role in here because they do. So I'm going to give you a second here to see if you can take a guess at how we're going to use commas and semicolons. And I also need more coffee. Okay, so what do you see in this sentence that we were just talking about punctuation-wise, comma, comma. We're hanging these dependent clauses off of commas because commas can separate dependent clauses from each other and they can separate dependent clauses from independent clauses. They are not strong enough to separate two independent clauses that are sandwiched together in a complete sentence. So let's see how that would work, two independent clauses as part of the same sentence. So here is a sentence, and we're going to put punctuation in it in just a minute, we haven't gotten that far yet, that is very similar to this one. My friend Bob lives in an apartment. Now we know from this sentence that my friend Bob lives in an apartment is an independent clause, and that is true in this sentence as well. It is also an independent clause. And what makes it an independent clause is that we could take everything else apart and it's still its own sentence. I wish that I lived in an apartment. If I just said that, it's its own sentence. So that means that it is also an independent clause. This sentence that's on top has two independent clauses and no dependent clauses. But we're missing something in here because we need some punctuation in order for this sentence to be structured and grammatically, uh, structured in a grammatically correct fashion. So, here we saw commas separating dependent clauses from independent clauses. Here we're going to use a semicolon because the semicolon is a stronger piece of punctuation than a comma. Some people say it's kind of halfway between a comma and a period because it uses both pieces of punctuation. You can think of it that way, it's fine. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that's particularly helpful, but some people do find it helpful to, to think of it like that. So we're gonna use a semicolon here because it can hang two independent clauses together in the same sentence. My friend Bob lives in an apartment. I wish that I lived in an apartment. What we have here grammatically now is this sentence, my friend Bob lives in an apartment, doesn't clean it, and plays video games all day, is kind of like a condemnation of Bob, right? It's like, this guy has no responsibility. My friend Bob lives in an apartment. I wish that I lived in an apartment is completely different. This thought here changes a sentence entirely. Now it's one of admiration for Bob, maybe a little bit of jealousy. He's got some independence. That's kind of a nice thing to have, right? We could, we could have something in the middle. My friend Bit Bob lives in an apartment. I play video games all day. Like, oh, <laughs> my life is better than Bob because I play video games all day. We could change it up a little bit like that. The point, the point of that diversion is, is just to say, whatever you want to have in the clauses is up to you to convey the thought that you're looking to convey. That doesn't change the way that the punctuation is used. When you have two independent clauses together, two things that could be sentences on their own, but that you want to stick together in a single sentence to make that, that 
that's the connection between those two separate ideas clear, then you use a semicolon. If you have dependent clauses that provide more information about an independent clause, as these ones do, then you use a comma. And that's really, I've said to a bunch of times, the difference between an independent and a, pen, and a dependent clause. <laughs> I've said a bunch of times, the difference between an independent and a dependent clause is that independent clauses could be their own sentences, yes. Dependent clauses could not be. Dependent clauses also provide more information directly about the independent clause. Independent clauses tend to provide more information contextually, but not directly about what's in the first independent clause. So that's just a, a way to, to also help identify them. So that's the difference between independent clauses and dependent clauses. So if you've made it this far in the video and you'd like to put two sentences in the comments, one that is two independent clauses and one that is one independent clause and some number of dependent clauses, feel free to and uh, I will let you know how you've done or help you understand a little bit about what you might not have gotten. And just remember, as long as you take care of the sentence, the sentence will take care of you.